Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. Alright, we coming in with this week's finale. Like, it took yeah. us forever to get here. But Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 3, Episode 19, Lo and Behold. Yeah. Before we even get into it, thank you all who knew that I had to go in for surgery. Surgery was a success. Um, hopefully on next Friday, I get to take the temporary cask off and get a brace. Yeah. That is the prayer. So if y'all don't know what happened, I fell in Jamaica. Long story. Yeah. It is. It does, it is. At Dunn's River. <laughs> yeah. So let's go ahead and get into But, but this. before we get started, we hope that y'all had a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm hope that Hope that y'all enjoyed your family. Your and, and let us know down in the comments if you still chewing on the leftovers from Today Thursday. Today is the last day. <laughs> really, yesterday should have. No, yesterday was the last day. Right. For us. Can't do it no more. Won't do it no more. Y'all will get food poisoned if you go after Saturday anyway. But anyway, <laughs> so let's go ahead. This week's episode was all centered around Mel and her premiere party for her video of Telltale Signs or whatever. So everybody is coming to the event. Everybody looks amazing. Um, I don't know what Destiny had. Destiny said, listen, I'm single. No. I'm going to show y'all fools what I'm working with. And the next contestant could be here at this daggone premiere party. We don't yeah. even know. Um, Miss Val, she looked like she had on her Deaconess number one outfit. But she, <laughs> she, she still looked good. But yeah, everybody came in there. They look really nice. I said um, Maurice was getting ready to preach his initial sermon. Yeah, with his bishop's robe on. With the bishop robe top <laughs> on. I said, mm-hmm. You can't look. Just because you don't go to church like that no more don't mean the church ain't never filing. Come on now. <laughs> and I like that black shirt that uh, Marshall had on, too. Yeah, I do like that. I might have to order me one because I think... I ain't gonna... ordered nothing from Marshall. <laughs> he supposed to been sitting there a bottle of that black chocolate in a bottle. We ain't seen it. Yeah, I ain't ordered nothing from you. We don't know that's what he was going to say. Well, we just, Sadly. well, that's what my mind says, so I'm sticking with it. All right. So let's go ahead and get into it. So everybody arrives, like we said, and then there becomes a conversation where Tiffany was, well, I'm pretty sure that Martel is going to show <clears throat> up. Like, this is, you know, this is something for Mel. And, you know, I don't see why he wouldn't be here. And everybody's looking at her like, are you dumb, slow, or stupid? Like, you've been in the atmosphere where they've been together. You've been the main one that have been clutching your invisible pearls every time they get into it. Now this is an event that Mel actually has control over the guest list. And you, you think, think that she would would. invite him? I was right. totally like, yeah. are we dealing with two different people at two different times in the form uh, of Tiffany? I mean, it's clear that she that she loves the drama between she them. She does. Yeah. <laughs> so Miss Wanda, she shows up. Miss Wanda looked good. Like I liked her outfit. Everything about Miss Wanda this week, I liked. She tried to get a little messy, but her messiness stayed on this level right here. Like yeah, it didn't, it didn't get, go over the top. It didn't get too far yeah. out of hand. So all of the cast, um, we got um Maurice and Kimmy. They're joking about the um the gifted um honeymoon that Destiny gave them or whatever. And here go um Wanda. What, what, what's going on? Uh huh. What y'all talking about? I'm like, don't tell her nothing. That was my first thing. See, when people <laughs> want to be too nosy, just ignore them. Act like you don't hear them. Don't fill in the details because that's when it goes left. So they're filling in the details like, yeah, this is what happened. And that oh, honey, you got to keep them single women's away from your men's and all of this. But so, it was like, don't you got a husband and a boyfriend on the side? Yes. She was like, yep. You know, but that's my mistake. That's my that's mess up. That's my business. <laughs> yeah, so, here it. Come, so here come Kimmy. Kimmy was like, you know what? Why is it that every time we get in situations like this, this whole side thing come up? Yep. With messing with married people. I'm so sick and tired of it. I was like, Kimmy, I, I didn't even correlate the two with this one. It was really just like a joke for me. Yeah, it was all in fun. So I don't know if, uh, if production was like, Plug that in there for one last hoorah or whatever, because it didn't it didn't quite connect. And everybody was like, we talk about Wanda right now, so we can yeah. stay on this topic as long as we want to. But I don't know what that's in this trip, because she was doing a lot of hanging around Maurice and uh, what you call it, uh, well, that's at that thing. Fire, ain't it? Yeah, I don't know. I think she might be serious about that three. She might be. Hey, huh. hey they grown people. Ain't none of my business. Hey, she's single. She can do whatever she wants. And then, and they married. If they agree to it, ain't nothing we got to say about it anyway. In Hooters. 
So then we see Val. Val is over there kind of working the room and whatnot, talking to people at the table because Mel hasn't come out yet. And next thing we know, we see Wanda approach Val. I said, listen, don't start the foolery right now. We don't have time for it, Wanda. Because y'all always do that at events. Every All foolishness. Time. <laughs> so she asked Val, like, can I talk to you for a minute? And Val was like, if you're coming with the BS in so many words, I ain't got time. So is it a good talk or is it a bad talk? She was like, I just want to talk to you. So they ended up going off to the side and whatever. And Val made her point very, very clear. When it comes to my daughter... And that BS advice, advice that you give, that you give no, her. No, that toxic advice. It really is toxic <laughs> It is toxic, advice. yeah. You can keep that for wherever or whoever is willing to listen. But for me and mine, we got this. Don't worry about us. Don't put that kind of stuff on her. So here go Wanda. But you know how I am. I hate it. If you don't, if you want. That's when people's defense. Woo! Yeah, you know how I hate yeah. it. If you want to piss me off, use that as a line of defense for me. You know how they are. I had a family member try to try that on me with my father not long mm -hmm. ago. Well, you know how he is. Well, he knows how I am. Who's going to win in this argument? <laughs> but anyway, so she was like, you know what? how I am? And then she agreed, you know, I'm going to leave this stuff alone. But if this stuff is in social media, I, <laughs> I got a right to talk about, about it. it. And I got a right. So pretty much what she said is... If it hits the internet, I'm talking about it's it. fair game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I don't give a dirt what you say. So she kind of just shashayed away and went on to do whatever Wanda does. Work the room again. It was a pointless argument. It in my book, they was basically was. arguing about you not gonna give my daughter advice, and I'm not gonna give your daughter advice. Settle, settle, settle. Yeah. So now we have the group all kind of just sitting together, <clears throat> right? So this is an opportunity for them to just have this powwow. Earlier in the episode, we saw Tiffany go visit Mel because they were trying to get some interns to come in to help out with different things that Mel needs and whatnot. And she had brought up at that time that she didn't appreciate Tisha asking her her business. Excuse me? Excuse me. <laughs> the person that interjects themselves in everybody's business the person that hears a nugget mm -hmm. but turns it into a 20-piece with the dipping sauce now has a problem with somebody directly asking you, you about your business. Yeah. Okay, whatever. So now we have an opportunity for it to come out in Front <clears throat> Street that she felt like Tisha was being messy. And everybody is looking at her like, wait, what? So, here is what came out of it for me. And Kimmy hit it on the head. You tell people that if there's anything that you want to know about me, ask, ask me. me. Yeah. But then when someone pulls you to the side, not in front of everybody else, pulls you to the side and asks ask you, they being messy. then they are being messy. Mm -hmm. But no one would have known that Tisha asked you these questions. If you didn't go back and tell them. Right. Or like people we've dealt with <laughs> that say, I want you to be truthful with me. Let me know. Call me out on my BS. And two. Yeah, and two, you call them out on their BS. Now all of a sudden they hide at you and that you judgmental. You're judgmental. Yeah. Or you, no, 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 no. You hating on me. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> That's another one that'll piss yeah, me Yeah, you off. hating on me. And I'm like, you ain't got nothing. Nah, though. but you told me to call you out on your BS when I see it. So everybody's looking. And even um, Destiny was like, and, T and Tiffany was like, well, me and Destiny, we had to get to a place where, you know, the whole timing thing for me is something I'm learning. But we got to a place where when she wanted to know something about me, she took me out to a bar and we got to know each other. She asked me questions. Destiny was like, it took a while to get there. Uh -huh. And at the same, she did exactly what Destiny did without spending money on you. Exactly. I mean, she really she did. She didn't ask you in front of everybody. Yeah, she pulled yeah. you to the side and she asked you directly, like, we don't know anything about you. Who are you? What's going on? And she still tiptoed around the whole conversation about why her and her ex-husband broke up. Because she cheated. But we, I cheated on you before I got married. And in high school, and I'm like, that don't even count. <laughs> that don't Not what Tisha said. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, in my opinion. Y'all think it counts? Like, if you've been with somebody your whole childhood 
you cheated in high school, then you all decided to get married and it never happens again. In my opinion, that's kind of washed away. Right. That's like the growing pains of being that age. Then you figure out what you want, you get married, you don't do it again. It doesn't matter to me. Now, to me, I think the cheating hurts whether it's in high school or in your marriage. But in the case of what they're yeah. talking about right now is present stuff. Right. It's like we're talking about being cheating, people cheating in their marriage, but you go all the way back to high school. Yeah. Because so that's my thing. I think cheating. You can't pull that in. I think cheating is across the board. You know, like I said, it's a hurtful it, it, thing. It yes. hurts in either circumstance. But in this case, we reaching all the way back to we high school. We reach it. Right. Yeah. Because at the point that you got married, you forgave that. Right. And you decided that that isn't going to be a component. Going forward. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Any hoodles. So we finally get to a point where in true black people fashion, <clears throat> pray for us, the event is late. Yeah. Mel is hot because she's like me. If I say 4 o'clock, 4, four o'clock. 5, we better start being on and popping. I hate events that are late. And don't tell me you setting up something with me. And we on a Zoom call, and I'm sitting there watching the time click by, and then when you pop on, you eat dinner. <laughs> Don't disrespect my time like that. Um, so Mel is upset about it, and she really can't get into her mode because she's more concentrating on the things that are going wrong. Mm -hmm. So she, eventually she was able to come out. She had this grand idea that she was going to come out walking with this dog. The dog didn't want no parts of this. He said he did not no. sign an agreement for this. He ain't getting no more kibbles and bits from this. Say them animal rights people are going to get you when you were dragging that dog. That's what I said, too. I said, oh, they're going to get you. So, you know, we all we had the premiere of the video. And crazy enough, I've heard this song a million times, and it never, like, it's a bop. Yeah. But I actually liked it when I heard it tonight or today. I was like, you know what? I can see why it did chart the way that it did. Right. Um, is it a career? I don't think so. But I think it's that tardy for the party. Like you you, yeah, you that, hit that, that, that magical that. moment right. and magic happened and ride that thing till you can't ride it no more. I ain't even trying to be funny. Exactly. Ride it. You yeah. deserve to ride this. Man, I always thought it was a was a was a decent song. I just wanted her to tell the truth that it was about Montel. That's the only one just just say it's about Montel. Well, she's not going to admit it. So, <laughs> Martel. so now that everybody's sitting there listening to the lyrics of this song, even Tisha was like, hold on, wait, what? We didn't know that part was in the song. She needs to really be clear that this is about Martel. And at the end of the day, why are we saying that it's not? Like, is there a legal reason why she's saying that it's not? Because everybody, Ray Charles can see that it's about him. So that went off without a hitch. Like, everybody enjoyed themselves. Marceau was like, you know, I love everything that's going on with Mel right now. I can't get with the song. Because how you going to be dogging out my boy with, with a, a better, With a better looking version of my boy. <laughs> I said, Marceau, you get a point for that one. <laughs> so then, this was a production move. Because you cannot make me believe. That somebody pulled a mail on mail. Because <laughs> Mel and Martell does this at everybody's events. And they get mad when somebody does it, it at him. theirs. But Destiny pulled Mel to the side. Because Mel was, you know, kind of thanking everybody for coming out. And she said that everybody that was there was a part of her village. And that everybody there meant the world to her in different ways. So Destiny decided to pull her to the side. And they started having this conversation about... Destiny not having a village, but Mel having a village. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes Mel doesn't understand the place that she's in because she's able to have some support to lean on when it's things that she needs to do. Her on the other side, it's just her. Her mother, I think she said her mother isn't there in the city that she's in. Her in-laws don't step up like that. And kind of like, I guess with the father, her ex-husband, it has to be, you know, coordinated or whatnot. So she was like, you have a village and I don't have that. But you can depend on me to be a part of your village if you need to. So Mel was like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Why are we having this conversation? Why are we having this conversation now? And then Mel was like, I don't need you 
as a part of my village. We got that on lock. The way she said it could be taken as offensive, but I get what Mel was saying. I have four children. Mm -hmm. You're telling me that you don't have a village for your one. Why would I take my four and, and place it like in that. your situation when right. I don't have to? <laughs> right. I have other people that I can do mm -hmm. that will do for me and my children. Right. Why would I take that and put it over on you when you're trying to build your village right now? Right. And so I get that. And we, it go back to like what we talked about too. We have some friends that are that are just like Destiny that will kill themselves to do something for the circle. Mm -hmm. And because of that, some stuff we don't tell them and put on them because we already know that they're struggling already. So I wouldn't do that to them. Right. So I think that's where Mel was coming from. Mm -hmm. So even though we know we don't like some of the stuff she do, but I do agree with her. In that circumstance, she can't handle that right now. Yeah, and and but at the same time, I I kept laughing throughout the whole thing because Mel was like, "This is an event where it's all about me. I'm celebrating this, and I'm I've had these milestones. Why are is it pressing that she pulls me to the side and talk to me about this right now? You're mad because somebody pulled a you on, on you yep. <laughs> because you do this. Yep. Let's let's go. Let's talk about it. Weddings. By Miss Fuss. <laughs> I mean, every event, you and Martell has turned that into a Mel and Martell event. Bingo. So, take this one for the motherfucking team. <laughs> and we know that production did this because there was no way that this happened. So, she eventually, they started getting loud. And I was like, oh, hell, here we go with the loud talking. And the, ah, da, 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 da. ooh, Jesus. <laughs> Then she ended up shashaying away, and then she did the Kenya, Kenya Moore twirl, and Destiny was holding the train of her dress. I said, if she fall. So then, what happened after that? Uh, Martell shows up, because everybody is kind of at this point now where they are watching the fireworks display. When Mel he showed up, I just knew the drama was getting ready to happen. I said, here you go. Yeah. Oh, before we even talk about that, when Destiny offered her services to help out with the children. Why did Mel tell her? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my kids ain't checking for you. They was like, oh, boring Bo destiny. Boring destiny. <laughs> so Destiny's told her right. Because here is my thing. What is going on where these kids are hearing stuff enough to say boring destiny? Right. Or this about destiny. And Destiny was like, I think it's disrespectful that you would even let ch uh, entertain your children talking about an adult like that. I was like, I kind of agree with that. Because I'm like, where did that come from? Now, granted, they're friends. Children form their own opinions about people. Mm -hmm. But that was a little like... Mm. Like, like, I think <laughs> like, like they've been hearing. hearing self, yeah. And then they was like, oh, boring Destiny? No. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want them. The kids, kids pretty much like everybody, unless they feel your vibe. Yeah, and they don't like it. So Martel shows up. Martel has on white and, and black, black, so that he can stand out. So he asked Mel, "Listen, can I talk to you for a little bit?" And she was like, "Right now?" He was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So he pulls her to the side, <laughs> and I said, "This is about to yeah, go it's loud." About to blow up right here, real quick. And he said, "You know, I came over here, and you know, I decided that you know I was gonna show up." She said, "So you're gonna show up to an event that I did not invite yeah, you to?" This is how we know it was production because an event that you paid tens of thousands of dollars for, like you said, right. then I know you paid for security. Exactly. So this is definitely a production thing. We had to have Martel on this last episode, but what I didn't like, I'll go ahead and jump the gun. Is that on really pulled the okie doke on us. Because do y'all remember when this first started? Probably was episode one or even two. When they kept showing previews of what the last scene, um, episode was going to be about. We saw fake engagements. Mm -hmm. We saw, uh, like the old people saw ambulance, ambulance. coming up. So they made it seem like, like somebody got to duke it out. Yeah. Like there was a whole kerfuffle going on. And pretty much Martel was like, you know, I came up here <laughs> to see, you know, see you and, you know, give you positive vibes yeah, and energy. Show, show support. Show support, you know. <laughs> you know, I was there from the beginning and the beginning was me and me and God, you and the kids and, you know. <laughs> 
and I just want to wish you well. You know, I always talk about the BS song, but, you know, I really want to support you in the song because the song is not bad. I just think it's kind of messed up that it's about me mm -hmm. and everybody knows it's about me, but, you know, that's different. You know, we do have this foundation of children that we need to support. <laughs> and because of that, you know, I'm here and I want to make sure that this goes off without a hitch. And You, you need know, to stop. <laughs> But on a serious note, though, I I, I want to give Martell his props because we've been hitting him upside the head the whole season. You know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes, he is narcissistic. He get on our nerves. He shouldn't have cheated on Mel. But the one thing you cannot argue with in this world is success. Yeah. And that's one thing that Mel is demonstrating that he against so. all odds stacked against you, you got four kids, your husband cheated on you, had a baby, now you had to figure out how to balance all that stuff, and you had a present business, and started a new business, wrote a song, wrote a book, started a t-shirt company, and it's all success, all successful. You gotta, you gotta applaud her for that, man. You, you got, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You got to. I mean, that's success, man. And one thing I don't, I, I'm not hating on success. Oh, we no. not, we might not make like some of the moves she makes and talk some skit about her, but that success right there is inspiring, man. It is inspiring, and and it should be motivating to other people that you have no excuse to not be successful. And because plug some, in when the opportunity is there, like I said right. with the song, mm -hmm. the opportunity was there. She has a perfect setup. For a song such as this. Everybody loves a comeback story. Right. Everybody loves something that most people can identify with. Most people, unfortunately, have had a heartbreak or a cheat or something like that. Yeah. Whether it's pre-marriage, during marriage. So everybody loves to see that person that, throughout it all, is able to rise above it and actually right. like just get really successful so she did she she became really successful really successful at yep. the right time and i say stay <clears throat> plugged in right and ride it till you can't ride it no more or like we said church she done been through the fire and she don't smell like smoke. And she don't you know or she don't look like what she been through hello <laughs> so then we see martel in his confessional and he was like yeah you know i came and you know I, I was on my best behavior, and you know, I really, <laughs> I really would like for her to admit that the song is about me. But you know, maybe, maybe I can get my attorneys on that because you know, it, I should get a cut of that. Maybe I should get a cut of that. And I was like, we know that Martel probably was joking in that moment, but we know in a moment where he gets upset, it become real. It becomes <laughs> real. <laughs> Next thing we know, he and his phone talk about uh -huh. so, You know, uh, <laughs> so right there, you know. I, we're going to meet at this coffee house with this green tea. And, and, and Nigga Higgum also again was like, when Martel showed up, I just knew the drama was going to be in. He said, I'm just mad that I wasted a bucket of popcorn. He said, I'm glad it didn't, but I was anticipating the show. Yeah. I was. I, I was. I, I was, yeah. So they all was taking pictures at the end. And I said, Martel, now, now you're being mad. He up in there. You all in the pictures in the background. <laughs> so now she got to get somebody to Photoshop you out because she don't want you a part of this. Oh, she ain't gonna Photoshop about it. No, we don't. Because he came it. correct. That's why. He did come correct. So, and that's the type of co parenting, ex um, yeah. spouse <clears throat> um, situation that we love to see people in is when it just didn't work. Yeah. And it is what it is. But, baby, let yeah. me tell you. Huh? This reunion here? Oh, that's fitting to be crazy. Said Carlos King was asking the right questions from the. From the, uh, from the little bit we see? Yeah. Carlos, baby, <laughs> the Hulks used to love you. I don't know if they're going to love you after Yeah, no questions. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> and we're going to be all the way here for it. Yes, indeed. So straight from VA. The dirty, dirty South. To, uh, to town. Holla! <laughs>